Good morning, and welcome to our continuing series, Interviews with Disciples and Devotees. Today, again, we are very pleased to have with us Dr. Pachagavkar to speak on mind and body relationship in homeopathy. Welcome, sir. It's a big subject. Yes. Is it not? Yes. Where does one begin? See, everyone knows that body works under the governance of mind. So it is the mind which decides first, be it even painting. Like that painting starts in the mind of the artist and then the hands draw it. So certainly whatever activities we have, are governed by the mind. Naturally, the central entity to even health preservation, it is mind which governs. Hmm. So there are many disorders which start in the mind first and then it percolates onto the body. Or some, it is actually deviation at the mental level which results into somatization at body level. So in homeopathy, we treat the whole person as one unit. At body level, vital level, as well as at mind level, we study the whole individual and try to study the individual as a whole and then match with the remedy. And the remedy which is matching at every level, like body level, vital level, as well as mind level, it is supposed to be the best similimum. So we don't treat the person on the specification of disease, but we treat the person who has that specified disease. Well, let's take an example of herpes. Yes, herpes simple X or herpes zoster, whatever it is, it is mainly sort of a viral infection. This is the common understanding that it is a viral infection. But see, like every individual does not come down with that. It is mainly the predisposition of the individual which gives, you know, uh, one to background to thrive for such virus. Really? So it is mainly the susceptibility of that person to develop herpes, which is the main reason and not the virus, because this virus has been there in the universe. But it becomes live and active only when the conditions are conducive for it. But if the person is not conscious in the mind? Yes, of course. the the, the uh, you may not be aware of like this virus or all, it is not like what organism is there. But it is the general immunity of the person which can't cope up with the situation and therefore it allows this uh, viral infection to thrive. Sometimes, rarely, very rarely, maybe once every few years, I get a cold sore. Huh. I'm told that's uh, herpes. Yes, but you know, most of the times it is the the body which it is a system, and in the system, what happens? Body tries to react and corner it to the safer location. So these herpetic eruptions arising around the mouth, especially mm -hmm. the corners or any mucocutaneous junction. It can be near the nose. It can be near the eye. Mm -hmm. Any mucocutaneous Seven junction. On the lip a little bit. Yes. So these are what we call that body is trying to push it to the periphery. So it can be like a curative phase also. Mm. Body reacts to it. It indicates your defense mechanism getting roused and the um, things are being cornered or put into safer location in the periphery. Mm. So we should not take uh, eruptions negatively. It is body's defense which has uh, put confine this disease phenomena on the periphery to the safer location and then it is resolved. It is by the, resolved. By the body itself? 
by the system itself the i system won't call body but it is okay. mainly the central the system, system. Okay. through body of course through the body yes oh i see see there are like in homeopathy <coughs> most popular remedy all over the world is arnica for injury now any injury the first remedy comes to our mind is arnica montana this is a plant mm-hmm. in a potentized form <coughs> but if you study the background that why it is specific to the injury see the arnica person like what we have done is arnica montana we have given in healthy human beings and we have observed the effects of this remedy in healthy human beings at different level so the mental symptoms are very prominent in arnica the arnica person is having a very strong ego but with this ego is a stupidity means he doesn't understand the limits of ego and that egotism is so strong that the person stupidly exposes himself to the trauma or injury at every level means uh, yeah, because of his ego he doesn't behave properly with the people and when person doesn't behave properly with the person then naturally he will get shock of his life people will give rebuttal and then he gets injured so even when you are walking with egotism not conscious of your movements you are too rigid then only there are chances that you get injured and so, what what we call a blunt injury <coughs> and arnica is supposed to be the best remedy even at physical level but mainly such injuries even at mental level because of the own egotism and not be having any plasticity or elasticity or adaptability there you, uh, most of the chances are that you are injured emotionally elsewhere also but you said you gave arnica to healthy people for pruning <laughs> all homeopathic remedies are proved on healthy human beings i see because you then you get what we call pure effects like exactly what are the properties of the remedy of course there are these remedies are verified in the clinic that sometimes like accidentally some poisons are taken see person is otherwise healthy mm-hmm. so even even snake uh, poison lachesis it is proved in this way only that uh, we have uh, they observed that the, the deadly poison of this lachesis when it was collected and person in a very minute dose comes in contact with this poison he developed few symptoms and those symptoms these properties of the lachesis were utilized as a curative property in homeopathy so there are accidental provings there are intentional provings so invariably this is the cardinal principle of homeopathy that all the properties of the drug should be known in a purest form so basically all homeopathic remedies are proved on healthy human beings to understand the clear cut symptoms of that remedy and therefore even even more than 200 years now and homeopathy the properties of the remedies are never what we call outdated what properties were observed by our founder hanuman and his team are still getting verified in the field that they are there there is nothing like an outdated drug or something same properties carry because all these properties which we have recorded in materia medica the name of our materia medica book itself is materia medica pura uh. by hanuman he, he mm-hmm. has two volumes and in his lifetime like when he was started working on homeopathy he worked almost like 50 years and in 50 years he and his team they have proved almost 99 drugs at every level of the being and each drug the utmost importance is given to mental symptoms hmm. generally in practice we what we do is we try to work out the whole whole totality of symptoms totality of symptoms like what we call right from birth we collect all the details 
and when we come across some range of remedies which is fitting into all the complaints then we differentiate these among these remedies on the basis of mental symptoms oh, to uh, to speak to our audience uh, again of my uh, this personal little thing uh, this uh, herpes um, I'll tell you how I have treated it in the past and you tell me how it's done in homeopathy. Um, I can put a little Blistex on there, a little Abreva, and in two days it's gone. Now, if I didn't put anything on there, it could last for weeks. Yeah. No, for, um, <clears throat> so I how do you it, treat it? Yeah, that is what, no, we treat it as one of the component of totality. Same example, like we have uh, many drugs, wide range of drugs, which which cover this herpes simplex, oh. or herpes labialis, we call it, if it is around the lip. Uh, okay. See, what is herpes zoster? You mentioned that. Pardon? Herpes zoster. Herpes zoster is cover, uh, affecting the nerves, so therefore it is very painful as compared to this herpes oh. simplex. Well, this we call in general herpes simplex, mm -hmm. or herpes labialis because it is around. Yeah lips. Mm -hmm. Herpes zoster affects the nerve endings and therefore it is very painful. It is a mutated virus of uh, chicken pox like thing. Mm. So this, this virus is dormant in the system. It remains dormant and when the immunity of the person is down, it surfaces as a, in the form of herpes zoster. And not only where, there. Where does it occur in the body? It's all over. Oh. Anywhere, nerve endings, peripheral nerves, they get oh. affected. So it can be on the trunk muscles, it can be on face, it can be on limbs, anywhere, anywhere it is possible. We reproductive organs? Pardon? Reproductive organs? It is mainly the nerves which get affected, the, the what we call the peripheral nerves. Oh. Huh. So, so the internal organs, they are not, no, not they affected. Are, yes, uh -huh. yes, they are not I affected. See. It is mainly the peripheral around so the then, skin. Yes, so your uh, cure. Huh. So, like for example, uh, we have one very common drug called natromuraticum for for such herpes. There are several drugs. Mm -hmm. That one is natromur, but we don't give natromur on the basis of local symptom. We always will look for like how is the mental disposition of the person. For example, some natromur patients they are mainly very introvert type they they would never never show their emotions outside they never share their emotions with anyone they are prone for depression they go on brooding especially when they are alone they go on brooding over negative things not only that they seek solitude to brood over negative things even if they cry, they would just go shut themselves in the room and cry without anyone knowing about it. So on the basis of these peculiarities at mind level, emotional level, we select a remedy which fits in, even covers the corporal symptoms like herpes simplex or something. So we don't treat the herpes simplex, but we treat the person who has developed herpes simplex. And then in, in turn it gets all right. This is in the principle. Turn. How, in turn. In turn. As I said, in See, two days mine clears up. With yes. The, but, just but, a couple of treatments. Yes. But but how long does it take with me up? Then again and again you may get it. Very rarely. So so that the disposition goes off. And and another thing I'll tell you. Like I'll give a simpler example of wart. Okay. So there are suppose someone develops a corn in the mm -hmm. foot or what? Or what about breaking out in the face? Yes, that also. So, yes. uh, so these wards, if we tr start treating homeopathically, we don't treat the ward per se. We treat, take the whole totality of the person who has wards. And in that totality, of course, the, the occurrence of ward is one of the component. So there what happens? we are treating the person at deeper level because mind is given the utmost importance in our totality 
and we try to select a remedy which definitely covers his mind and then the wards together and in such cases what happens when your central system is corrected then the 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 knowledge of what being maintained at the central system at that level the deviation gets cured and then not only this ward disappears but even the future wards will not be there ah. so the same way like herpes simplex so the, in the future it won't be there it it won't be there that is what we have observed in keloid also okay then if the person is still very indrawn and wants solitude and never expresses himself as you've said why should it not come back after you treated it once because it it actually resolves the issues at a deeper level at the very level of mind the issues are resolved so person you know takes things so easily and resolves it you see what transpired in childhood i have we have a case mm -hmm. where she had a mother who had rheumatoid arthritis and so she was a bit irritable then her father was very dominating so he used to dominate everyone so mother used to suffer because of husband's domination and she used to be very strict and with the children and now this so called child that lady is now above 60 years mother passed away before 15 years but still she is carrying those impressions and suffering from that like just imagine for a normal person what transpired in childhood how mother you know behaved with her doesn't carry any significance now she is independent she is 60 mother passed away people but still she is dwelling upon it this is something abnormal so a uh, one remedy one remedy will definitely re resolve the issues at deeper level at mental level and now she will just forget that negative past she may just learn the lessons from oh. the past but will not <clears throat> go on brooding upon the past events so once you treat that tendency then why should it come back even with a no fresh provocation also the person will be able to resolve it at deeper level so definitely it works and that's what we say the cure should be like gentle and permanent there is no point like you said you you uh -huh. applied something and it disappeared but what about your tendency yes see it's like still a, there like it's still there what of course what you, you just resect it surgeon will say what is there is harmless you just resect it remove but then what what about the tendency you are not tackling at that level same thing is like uh, renal calculi if you just remove one calculi calculus by surgery what about the tendency tendency remains so we have to treat the person at that level and my mental symptoms are given utmost importance you said 90% 90% 90% of the cases we have seen the you know many times i had one case if the person have had very simple complaint just local complaint when he used to yawn his temporomandibular joints to, used to get fixed and dislocated hmm. and tuck, he was not able to shut his mouth and we have not proved our remedies to the extent that they get this complaint you see the limitation of homeopathy is we are treating proving our remedies on healthy human beings now you can't prove a remedy till it gives you know maximum pathological symptoms <laughs> ethically you can't only at functional level it's fine so long as everything is reversible so we i couldn't locate any remedy where this sort of dislocation is there and two weeks i i studied this case what we call a local malady barring this he did not have any other complaint 
and uh, orthopedicians just trained him to manipulate and uh, help himself to yeah, on release a physical, it. On a yes, physical level. Physical level. Yeah. They, he would just manipulate yeah. and tuck, he will make it set right. But again and again, he was getting it. Then I started working on it and on the basis of mentors, I started uh, collecting the data that how he behaves, like he is more concerned about others, he can't tolerate injustice on anyone around, he goes out of way to help the people around. Sometimes he landed up in soup because of his helping nature. And even like all the complaints were right side on him from very childhood. He had history of sciatic pain also. With the, on the basis of history and his generalities, he craved more salty taste, all that. I, I just gave him a remedy called causticum. Causticum is a potassium salt. Mm. And uh, when I started treating him with causticum, after one month he came and told me, Doctor, I can't tell you whether I'm cured or not. I said, what happened? Means it is you who would tell me, you know, inform. And then he said, no, I did not yawn in last one month. So how should I know whether it is getting dislocated or not? <laughs> it means even I had not noticed that excessive yawning, because why should one yawn several times in a day? And excessive yawning also was one of the symptoms in causticum. But I prescribed causticum on the basis of mental symptoms. And the cravings and generalities, whereas he stopped yawning and then there was no chance of dislocation unless he yawns. Yeah. And then again I said, okay, this seems to be your remedy. So I gave still higher potency, like earlier I had given him 30, then started 200 and then when him I gave. Yeah. And later on he came that, oh yes, I yawned, but this time it was not dislocated. Means. Actually, the entry point for our treatment was his dislocation tendency. But for me, the drug did not have that symptom. Yeah. Whereas, on the basis of mentals, when I prescribed, this thing got cured. So, this is the best part in homeopathy. So, if we could just talk for a few minutes on the 10% where the body is involved and not the mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See. <laughs> It's difficult, like sometimes, you know, suppose some poisonous bite is there. Yeah. Definitely the mind has nothing to do with it, isn't it? That's right. There is physical corporeal trauma. Yeah. But there, see, like same injury, if 10 people are inflicted, their, their reaction will be not be the same. Oh, let's, so let, well, let's say a scorpion bite. Scorpion bite. So same volume of a scorpion bite, each one will not get affected in the same way. So there is individuality. So in scorpion bite also, we ask like what type of pain it is, stinging pain, relieved by cold, or relieved by warmth. On that basis we select, we have like cedron, we have lead all these remedies. So there also we use the the sensations and and mental symptoms to select the remedy even for scorpion bite so definitely mind has a role in it if it is available and that is what we say when when mental symptoms are matching we give the highest potency ah, with okay. presumption that the person is very sensitive to this medicine because he has developed symptoms at mind level and that much peculiar Therefore, we give higher potency and we don't need to repeat the remedy where the mental symptoms are clearly matching with the remedy. Just one single dose. Hypothetically, hmm. one single dose would suffice to cure even a serious disorder if it is matching at all the levels and especially mind. One last question. Last week, I believe I received from you about a lecture on spondylitis. Yes. Can you just say a little bit about uh, the response to people and, yeah, yeah. and the talks? Yes. People are, have responded positively. They are very happy that they have realized themselves that spondylitis again is the 
after effect of deviation at the mind level the the level of awareness if the person is aware of the movements or the dynamics of physical movements then the spondylitis starts receding it reverses like like simple the people who had neck pain they just started now raising themselves and keeping them alert and lifting up within minutes the spondylitic you know discomfort is relieved so many people have gone through the video they liked it yes. very good very good thank you so much very informative namaste